Hi there, my name's Dan Harris and welcome to OneSite TV. Today we'll be looking at the reporting of a supervisory system. You can even do this on a JACE, but we'll be looking at its first most basic form of reporting. I'll be doing another video later on in the weeks coming to show you the more in-depth version of this, but this is just a snapshot. It's a really quick, easy way to be able to actually go to a client and show them the data that they've got on site. You can use it for things like AHUs, various things like pumps, statuses or various controllers, or even getting data from meters. It's a really nice, neat way to actually just grab that data, take a snapshot, as I say, put it on a supervisor or even print it and you'll be able to sign it off and give it to a client. So let me get straight into it and show me how you do this. So I've actually got already folders for fan core units. These have got pseudo points in there with various values, things like heating, cooling valve, set points, etc. Now, by using a BQL query and a reporting service, it gives us a really nice way to be able to go get that data and use it in a conventional way that we can give to the client. We can actually pinpoint it using BQL queries, wildcards, to actually say, this is what I want and this is what I want to show. It doesn't make much sense now, but I'll do this as a slow process, doing it one at a time. Once you get more familiar with this, you'll be able to do this quite quickly with your naming conventions and easily be able to pull out that data. So let me show you and get straight into it. I'm gonna to go to my report folder. I'm gonna go right click new and will you be using the report PX file? Don't use a PX file. This is the nice easy way of doing this. I'm just gonna click on there. I'm gonna call this fan core units. Hit okay. And go into there and go into edit mode. So the two parts of this I'll be using is a bound label Double click there. I'm just gonna unanimate this and just put a very basic text in there. I'm gonna make the font slightly larger because it is actually quite small and give it a little bold. And we should just have a name fan coordinates at the top there. Perfect. Next thing I'm gonna use is a bound table. This is the clever part. So this is the bit that goes and gets and extrapolates that data for us. But first we have to actually sort of point at a folder and tell it what we're looking for. Once we told it where to go and what to match using wildcards, etc., we can then go and collect data. As I said before, I will do this as a bit by bit process one at a time. But what I actually want to be able to do is be able to go look at a fan core unit and then I want to be able to get each bit of that data and put them in columns next to it. So you have a nice neat format. So the first thing I want to do I'm going to go into my table and make a BQL query builder. Number one thing, I'm going to look at the peering. If you're going to look do this, you need to go to the highest point where all the data actually meets. So the best way I can actually do that is by going straight down into my software folder. And then I need to match something. It's match something that's common with it all. Now, number one thing I know that is common is the folder it resides in called fan core unit with the number. So I'm actually gonna go pull that data out and use a wildcard to and then get that and put that in a column. So let me just go do that now. I'm gonna go name. If we're gonna use wildcard, we need things like like, and we go FCU and put my asterisk at the top. So what that actually gives me now, it's gonna go out, match a folder. I actually haven't done this, it actually probably reset itself. So I'm gonna look for a folder with a name like fan unit with the little asterisk there. If I okay that, this will come back with our odds and everything, but not a lot of useful data to us. It's told us it's a folder and it's told us a slot path, but that's not really telling us a lot. So what I'm gonna do is actually start drilling down a little bit further into these points and actually using the naming conventions. And if you've got good housekeeping with your exact names, exactly the same, we can actually then pull that data out very easy. So I'm gonna go back into edit mode. I'm gonna add a column. So the first thing I'm gonna look at, it's found my folder with the name with fan core unit, but I need that to actually be a naming convention where we can actually show what fan core unit we're looking at. So that'll be my first column. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go name. Using a B format in standards, and I'm gonna go format and display it as fan core units. This will be at the top of our report sheet. So okay out of this, you can see now already we've got fan core units one down to 30 like I've actually got on my software. So we let's start grabbing that data. Now we'll be using again like a B format like you would within a widget on a graphic. We're gonna start using that a little bit more. So I'm gonna double click into there. But if we go any further, there's one important thing you need to realize because it's the most basic rawest form of reporting, we won't be able to get facets. So if you put things like enabled and disabled, flow, no flow, you won't get that through, I'm afraid. You'll just get a true and false and the same with temperatures with or say percentage of a valve, you will only get the value, 
not the actual facet itself. Click on there. And the first thing we're gonna need is probably fan enable. And again, like a B format, we're gonna go out dot value. Fan command at the top of our report sheet. And again, fan call units, fan command. Again, as I can show you, if I actually show you what I've actually got in the point of my facets, I've actually got an enable and disable for the actual facet itself, but it's just going to bring through it and it is raw as form. As I say, hopefully later on this week, I'll be able to do another sheet of video for you, which is a bit more in depth with live movable data. It's real time. This just takes a snapshot. You have to remember that. So again, I'm going to double click into there, click the folder and add another column. And this time, I'm going to use fan flow. Fan status. Okay, so now, problem is, this doesn't look very good. Just got true data next to it. Nothing looks too dissimilar to the other ones or believe it. So what I'm going to do is start bringing in various values now to prove that it's actually looking at live data. So the next thing I'm going to do, which is most changeable in the whole thing, is that I'm going to add another column. Copy that. Space temp. At the top of my folder. Okay, as you can see now, we are actually pulling in data. It's not all the same. So I promise you, I wasn't lying. So we're gonna go a little bit further. I'm gonna bring the next lot of these. So I'm gonna bring a few more in. And this will show you, it's a very handy format. With these PX sheets, you can actually pull them, these reporting sheets, you can pull them onto a normal PX graphics. You can also print them out, which is really good for a snapshot. Very easy to commission with as well, especially if you're going out over a whole floor and you need to drive a whole load of heating valves open, you'll be able to see something like a supply temperature, all of them rise. If you know, none of them, if you've seen notice that none of them have changed, you may have a problem with the valve, with the software, with the wiring, or knowing our luck, most, as you guys know, commission engineers normally just quite happily take them off while they balance in the water. Double click on there. Again, cheat by copying. Pasting. Okay, there's all my set points. And the last. Okay, and it's really nice and neat work with this. So I'm just gonna come out of edit mode. As I say, you can use these sheets to actually either print, to give to your client. You can put in a report sheet, really good for any sort of maintenance that you're doing out there. You can actually use these sheets to also go look at things like what valves are over 100%, what controllers are offline. Using a BQL query, and I'll probably do a video on that, a bit more in depth into that. It gives you the ability to go extrapolate data very, very easily, okay? So hopefully this video has been very helpful to you. Uh, feel free to leave any comments or any questions below. Please like as well, please do subscribe to us. We've got plenty of other videos, and hopefully in the coming weeks, we'll have a lot more coming out to you guys. With the release of 4.8, there's a few more things that are out there. So we want to get that to be shown to you. Things like the Ace engine for the Edge 10 controller and various other objects out there. So I hope you have a great one and speak to you soon. Cheers, bye.